and S today, buddy. Away, away, away. We're here getting fuel again. 238. The other numbers as they sit at this moment. 346 and 180, 897.3. Only slightly over. There's our finish. Well, let's see if we did halfway decent. Uh, oops. Yep, I got the right program. All right, three forty-six. Get fatted back. 21, 346. Yep, <laughs> we're still sitting in that 16 range. That is awesome. I will take it <clears throat> and I will be happy with it. For the sake of it being a 350 V8. But now we go enjoy some Subway. Well, I'm just going through old boxes of stuff that I never unpacked and Pretty sure this thing's never been mentioned before because it's not technically mine. It was originally my mom's and she took it to work and then she was going to get rid of it because it didn't support her new iPod. Well, yeah, it doesn't support anything past the fifth generation video iPods. And I think that includes the 5.5 generations, the sort of newer ones, but anyway. Yeah, it's been reduced to a pile of junk basically now because not only did it not work to begin with well it worked but only on one channel because I think the uh, volume potentiometer over here got full of junk or something and it just quit working right so I just decided well screw this I know it'll power my old iPod because I have the old fifth generation video iPod of course this one this one's actually got a newer uh, hard drive in it. I just need to get the cable for it. This is the one I've been using for the past seven or eight years now. And as you can see, it's got a little bit of a growth on the bottom of it. <laughs> I took the power supply that powers this thing, the control board for the iPod, and I wired it up to a little bit of... Uh, old stereo component oh uh, where are you at nope not that one here nope nope there's the switches ah uh, where are they at i just had the stupid thing there we are yeah old stereo component stuff i'm pretty sure this came from an old panasonic receiver unit that didn't work yeah it's just all ripped apart but i found a single that just had a red and a white on it and I just basically wired the output of the iPod to the RCA's and now the RCA's are going down and around the corner to the little coil over there and into my stereo so that's just awesome so now also it is charging at the same time because I wired the power supply to the iPod control it works. <laughs> it freaking works, you know? And I think this antenna is kind of neat. Like, this is all that pokes up out of the top of the uh, unit, this thing. But there's this whole rest of it underneath it, and I found out it telescopes completely into the base, including the bendy part. The bendy part is inside the base now. I thought that was kind of neat and I'm going to keep the antenna just for the hell of it. And a pile of screws and I'm going through the box and I'm finding floppy disks and everything to go with that. I have a whole collection of hard disks, uh, hard drive disks and yeah these are two and a half inchers. I got three of them and then all of these three and a half inch drives that I've taken apart over the years. They're just all piled up here now. 
And this box is full of floppy disks. And this thing is full of floppy disks. Yeah. These three are, uh, I'm picking up three here. DOS 622 and the purple headed ones are Windows 311. So they're still good. I can't get my computer to read all of these, so I don't know what's on them. This disc, however, wow. This disc I had back in like, <laughs> I think I've, I I think I was using this disc in the middle of middle school, and there's still data on it from that time period. In fact, let me get my old old laptop over here. It's still powered on, I think. Yep, sure is. All right, and it's got a floppy disk drive. It's one of the only computers I have that actually has a floppy disk drive anymore. And we'll go over here and check this out. It has. A background image <laughs> man it's been a long time since I've done anything like this and yeah I thought that was really cool I don't even remember how I did it honestly yeah I think this is sort of I think this is a boot disk too if I remember right like six of these things are MS-DOS 7.1 boot disks and I have no idea why I made so many. But I've got the whole the drive link which on the school computers gave me access to drives that weren't normally accessible on the computers because of restricted access permissions on the user accounts. And uh, access to my USB disk because uh, this my 256 meg uh, pen drive it was a Kodak was it a Kodak I don't remember it was some um, well I don't remember what it was but it showed up as a local disk instead of a removable disk like most most USB drives show up as removable disks well this one showed up as a local disk so I couldn't access it because of the permissions on those computers so I just used these links here to get me there and I think this desktop that I in I yeah it would have given the image for the E drive and shown the background image like it did on the main drive and then there's the boot drive CD-ROM control panel floppy drive network drives programs access if they weren't in the start menu <sighs> Just a bunch of old stuff, and I got batch files that I wrote, and oh, okay, this is the extended boot disk right here. <laughs> Man, I've got a disk log, check this out. From when I was using this, 2005, look at that, 2005, this disk has been around. P1 200 MMX, that was the old Pentium one from, God, we were still living in Shane Place at that time back in Anchorage before we moved to O'Malley before I ever started anything with videos and stuff and this old stuff God I don't even remember half of this stuff <laughs> install codes mp3 <sighs> yeah just incredible and the updater that kept backups of some stuff on my Pentium 1 computer <laughs> it was just nuts Let's see, I'm going to try to find out when was the last time anything was updated on this disk. Whoops. I need details. I'm seeing a lot of 2005 here. It's looking like that's going to be 2005 at the very latest. Nine four two thousand five. That was probably the last time I ever used this floppy drive or floppy disk. It's been around, to say the least. And all the other ones here, like this one's formatted for Macintosh. It it was used on the old Power Mac 6100 over there. 
Hmm. I actually still have that. My old Power Max 6100 is sitting in this side room here because I brought it with me from Anchorage. This thing right here, yeah, it works too, believe it or not. It takes a bit to start up, but it works. Alright, all that's plugged in. Plug that in. The CRT. Because I can't hook it up to an LCD monitor without a special adapter that I don't have, so that's just freaking awesome, right? Noisy beast. And this thing's running a 2 terabyte SCSI drive. This old Seagate. Sorry, 2 terabyte. 2 gigabyte, my bad. I don't even think this thing could support a terabyte drive if it tried. And I have to do that, otherwise the video won't post. <laughs> it's a well-known feature of these computers when the batteries die. There it goes. All flashy glory and everything. And then we have an awesome message that comes up all the time because the CMOS battery's dead. <laughs> and it closes itself, so it thinks it's Monday, and I don't know why it has such a strange starting time. But yeah, it's like 1956 according to it, so that's just awesome. So, yeah, all this fun stuff. God, it's so flashy. Can't stand CRT monitors. 67 hertz or something like that. It's ridiculous. Anyway, yeah, so that's that. It's got 1.8 gig available space, so that's awesome. And then I just go shut her down. Sure shuts down quick, though, that's for sure. I had a Perform a 5200 CD a long time ago back at the O'Malley house, but destroyed it when the hard drive failed and it ran an IDE hard drive so I probably could have just replaced it and reinstalled but it was an all-in-one unit it was super heavy and I didn't want it so I just destroyed it and I actually bought that machine in there because I needed a keyboard and uh, it pretty much just came in the box and bought it for 20 bucks and might try to sell it, might try to keep it. I'm going to see if I can figure out a way to get it to output its uh, video to a CR or to a LCD monitor so I can just dump the monitor off somewhere and keep the base computer. It's just kind of nostalgic stuff, you know. I run the emulator on here too, so um, oh, I think I closed it earlier. <clears throat> I don't remember. I got Mac OS via Basilisk. It's got the drives on here. They're both one gig drives. One of these emulated drives is System 753. The other is six, System 8.1. And I'm totally showing off my Facebook here. So that's just great. And it's way too fast for me to know what the hell is going on half the time. So there's that. And it's got the desktop screensaver system going. and. So that's just great. It just kind of runs in the background all the time after two seconds of inactivity. And yeah, after about five minutes, the actual screensaver will start up. But anyway, I've got this thing configured for 128 meg of RAM. And yeah, it's set up. It's got all, it's got a bunch of games, escape velocity. I wasted away days and days, and weeks and months on this game back in 2001 on one of my teacher's Power Mac systems, which kind of looked like that one in there, but I don't think it was a 6100. It might have been a 71 or an 8100. <clears throat> it was faster than this one in there, that's for sure. That, that one doesn't hardly run escape velocity at all. But yeah, just good old stuff, man. Great old stuff. 
Oh, go away. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. And then like everything works and it's just awesome. And I'm getting shot at and it's awesome. All right, so. I do the same thing there, I just hit the power button, which is the pause break button on this computer, so. <laughs> All right, this clip is way too long now. Uh, well, anyway, that was what I was starting with. I don't know why I got all into all this stuff. Why, why I even bothered. My place is a complete mess. Uh, so I started screwing with the iPods and everything, trying to uh, see if I could get the 120 gig drive Hard, hard drive iPod to work and I have to switch over the hard drive cable because I only have one that works but I did that got this hard drive all booted up and everything got iTunes got a bunch of music on it like 1600 something out of tracks went to hook it up to the system <laughs> don't get a darn bit of audio output out of this thing at all it's dead <laughs> it's still showing that I have a track there even though there's no hard drive cable because it's just sleep mode it doesn't need the hard drive just to enter sleep mode so yeah but in the off chance well audio didn't work on this thing at all so I was like alright forget it I'm not gonna worry about it right now I'll deal with it some other time I think I have another iPod somewhere that has a working main board but I'm not sure but I don't get audio out of the dock or the headphone jack, so I went ahead. I'm thinking, okay, I'm since the heart the headphone jack doesn't work in my working iPod, I'm just gonna switch out the headphone jack. And I discovered why the headphone jack did not work in the other iPod. Okay, let's get into some light over here so we can see a little bit better. Alright, so we're looking at the back plate of the iPod here. And you can see what looks like a little burn mark right there. It is. Look at the little circuit board right there. And you can see uh, there's something burnt up there. <laughs> that should not be burnt up. Because if you look at it on this one, this one's okay. Yeah, so... This uh, this headphone jack here works, so I'm just going to swap it into this back plate and I'm going to put a piece of electrical tape right there so there's no chance of something like that happening again. And we should be good to go. We'll have a working iPod for a little bit longer. <clears throat> and when this drive finally gets full, and it's pretty close to it already, in fact, let me see if I can get it to display something for me real quick. It is currently playing right now, <laughs> so it's having a little bit of a hard time staying together, but yeah, we'll go here, and you'll see I don't have a whole lot of space left on this little 30 gig drive. <laughs> so when this one gets full, I'm going to just go ahead and just, I'm just going to swap the hard drive into this one and reset it from there, because that'll work at least. Alright, enough of this 20 minute video going on about nothing in particular. <laughs>